On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're composing horror music with an extra creep factor. Well, no question, one of my favorite side projects that I've ever been involved in over the years is called Scaremeister. This is a project that included Kevin Key, myself, and ultimately we invited my humble brother, Traz Damji, to come and contribute. Now, Scaremeister officially got off the ground over a decade ago when Kevin and I were commissioned to put together a collection of horror music for the film trailer business. You know, in that industry and at that time, there wasn't a lot available in the horror genre. So when a prominent LA company approached Kevin and I about putting together a collection of horror music, we got really excited. And it was just a few months later that we officially and successfully invited Traz to come and contribute to that project. So for today's session, I'm gonna do a bit of a breakdown on one of the cues that we included in that first release. And this cue is particularly creepy in all the right places. You know, here it is July, the sun is blistering, it's so hot out, and we're in the control room talking about horror music. Awesome, check this out. I really dig that cue, and this is Kevin and myself contributing musically to this track. Traz actually didn't get involved till a little bit later in the project. This is very typical of how Kevin and I got up to working together on this project. Kevin would come up with a really solid idea that I would basically just get inspired from and run with. And of course, Kevin is the absolute master at creating really creepy sounds. He has always been a master at this, and something that he's just really, really good at, and that is going into his own studio and not only coming up with a really cool part, but developing it around a sound and something that he generates and creates from scratch a lot of times. You know, not only is it gonna be a cool part, but the sound that he's worked so hard at crafting plays a really big part in the track itself, right? So let me solo up the two tracks that Kevin sent. Check these out. Now that corally kind of string line really did a great job of setting up this cue. And I really didn't do much in the intro here other than just kind of support what Kevin did. I just sort of beefed up the bottom end with some strings. Yeah, a couple of simple sound effects right off the top just to kind of like set the mood of this piece. 
and then I introduce what I'm calling a warp track. This is a real string recording from my own proprietary library, and this is just absolute creep out factor going through some tape echo. Check it. Absolutely love stuff like that. You know, really creepy stringed instrument going into a tape echo and just messing with it, right? Absolutely playing things that are not musical. I love it. Yeah, what a cool arpeggiated part that Kevin included. I'm calling it Kev Gate. You know, it's not just that he included this arpeggiated part, but like so many times, Kevin went in and actually automated some stuff and baked in some effects to this track. Now, I've talked about in past sessions how much I enjoy collaborating with people that do this kind of thing, where they bake in certain kind of effects and so that that track that they're supplying me isn't just a static track, that there's actually movement going in on it. Yeah, that's a really subtle effect, but how effective is that? You know, as opposed to that just being a static track, I love stuff like that where I start assembling a mix and every one of those tracks has some kind of movement in it, right? It ends up adding up to a much more exciting and interesting mix, no question about it. So you can see that all I really did is just kind of augment what Kevin did for the whole first half of this thing. I'm just bringing in that bass string and then right towards the end of this line, I do one of the things that I absolutely love to do, and that is take the pitch of something and take it up, and at the same time, take the pitch of something else and go down with it. And this is a great example of exactly what I love getting up to. Check this out. Yeah, that little trick may have been inspired by the old THX logo. I mean, I think it worked pretty well for them. Absolutely inspiring, I love it. Love this acoustic guitar that really opens up the next part of this cue. Repurposing my sample banks, right? Coming up with brand new parts with samples that were from a whole different session, right? Different tempo and everything. When you're just going in and picking up the very beginning of those riffs and creating a new riff with it, totally works magically, I love it. And then as I often do, I add that offbeat bass note just hanging on the root. And then I bring in this creepy backwards piano feeding a bunch of delays. Yeah, what a cool sound that is. And what I used to generate all of that, very, very simple. I just played some simple piano chords. So I just took that simple piano part, flipped the audio around and fed it into a regenerating delay to create this effect. And check out this absolute thud of a sample I've laid in here. It's just some kind of kick drum that's been pitched way down and stretched out. I'm calling it crunch. Check it. Yeah, I love that kind of rip effect, I call that. 
all I did is take that kind of tuned down bass drum sample and I duplicated the very beginning of it, the attack, and I placed that duplicated part right before the attack of the main sample, reversed it, and then added Pro Tools Verify to kind of create that pitch up sound. And I really love how it creates that rip effect. I always love this on tracks. And this cello riff going against these guitars, so cool. And like I do so many times in these short cues, I like to try and lay down a couple of tracks towards the end of the cue that really intensify the vibe, right? Like really get under your skin, so to speak, and create that kind of tension as it builds up to the final climax, right? In this case, I added a choir that I put a lot of effects on and a ton of reverb, but I just keep building that choir all the way towards the end. And on top of that, I've got this other synth pad sound that I just put through a ton of distortion. And that's the perfect thing to create that edge, right? That ultra kind of tension as you're building towards the end of that climax. Really, really cool. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session, and I hope this session inspires you when you're composing your next horror cue.